Hello and welcome to the Indie Cider Podcast, episode number 60 for Wednesday, June 14th, 2017. I'm your host, Ken Gagney, and this week I'm playing Old Man's Journey from Broken Rules, released on May 17th for Steam, that's Mac and Windows, for $7.99, and for iOS and Android for $5.99. A review copy of the Steam version was supplied to me by the developers for the purpose of this review. This game is a artistic, beautiful 2D puzzle game about life, love, loss, and memories. You play this gentleman right here, this older man with extremely good posture who lives on his own by the ocean and one day receives this letter. Cheerio, good man. Speedy delivery. He goes back to his house. He reads it. He sits on the bench. Or maybe he does not. Yes, he does. And he thinks about the news he has gotten. This game has no text in-game, so you don't know the contents of the letter. But you do know that it moves him, both literally and emotionally. He goes into his house, he packs his bag, and he prepares for an old man's journey. It, this game is a wordless narrative that takes about 90 minutes to experience, and it's all point and click which is wonderful for the touch interface, but also for Steam, which is how I'm playing it. You'll hear from the developer later that they, I seem to think, prefer the mobile edition, but here is where you first encounter the gameplay, the mechanic that is what this game is all about. So you see there are four different terrains here, and you can navigate back and forth between this one, but if you hold down your mouse, you can see all these yellow lines, and you can actually move the curvature of the Earth. And you can see these little dots where they intersect. And anywhere that there's a dot, the old man can actually navigate between those terrains. And he gets smaller and smaller as he goes into the depth of the screen. And you're thinking to yourself, that's not how parallax works. That's not really how depth of vision works. But there it is. This game zooms in. And that is the end of that level, one of 15 levels. At the end of each level, he sits on a bench, and you can sort of play around with the other parts of the screen here a little bit, but your goal is to click on these two older, younger people. Now those seem like two lovebirds, and that brings to mind some memory of the old man. This is the entirety of the cutscene. It moves a little bit, as you can see, like you're on a boat, but there is no dialogue, there's no interaction. You can sit and stare at this for as long as you like, and look at the image in their eyes as they stare at each other. Ah, you click, and this little bubble pops up. And that's it. He has recollected something that is germane to the story, as you'll find out, but then the game continues. He goes along his way, and that is the end of level one. I will show you a second level before I bring on the artistic creative director of the game for this week's interview. Obviously, we have a lot to talk about because it's a very artistic game. Now, this level moves up and down. That's how it scrolls. So. You, have to, you can't move the level you're on, the hill you're on, that's why it has those vertical lines. But I can move this one down, and then he can just pop up onto there. If you want to know more about the art of this game than what you'll get from the interview, there is a great GDC interview, the Game Developers Conference, that the creative director gave just earlier this year, and it's available on YouTube in its entirety. A one-hour video. I highly recommend it. I watched it prior to conducting this interview. You can also sort of just uh, touch these other little interfaces. Oh! Hey, kiddo! A little paper airplane went flying out. I actually did not experience that the first time I played. Fun. So let's uh, continue up to this bench with the cat. Hey, kitty. Good kitty. Nice kitty. Does this bring to mind a memory already so soon? We just got here. 
Bye, kitty. Where are you going? No, no memory. Just taking a breather. Alright, so... Let's see. So I can make that intersect with the roof, but I can't climb up on the roof. So how do I get to where I'm going? Ah, I can climb up on the roof. Now I can go all the way up there. Just by making all these connections. Hi, kitty. Oh, oh, here comes the truck. Thanks for not running me over. Now, these buildings, if you watch the GDC video, you'll actually learn that these are modeled after real buildings. You get to see them in the video. It's really quite neat. Okay, so how far do I need to be going here? Do I want to go up on that roof? Do I want to follow the kitty? Oh, but I can't get... Okay. Can't move the roofs. Let's get back on here for a second. See if I can move this blue one. There we go. Now I can make it all the way here if I need to. I'm not sure I'm supposed to, but it's what I'm doing. And a hop. And a skip. And I don't think this is where I'm supposed to be going. <laughs> Let's try uh, crossing this bridge over here. Old man, old man, come back down. Little old lady who? Oh, she wasn't very happy about that, was she? Can I play with your radio? Uh-oh. Sounds a little oxen-free-ish to me. Nope. That's not the way I'm going. Oh. Alright, let's try going over here. I think maybe the cat is leading us to where we need to go. Oh, I just need to go far this way, and it... Hmm, so I kind of missed that. Now I can extend this down to my roof level, which allows me to go all the way to here. You can't click somewhere if it won't let you go there, so... Oh, you can also sort of plug these little holes, like the little boy in the dam. Oh, sorry, did I interrupt your music? Tweet, tweet. Oh, and a puppy. Hi, puppy. Oh. 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 So, now that I'm sitting down, there's something I'm supposed to interact with to trigger the memory. Not him. Oh. Here comes the bus! I understand that that's actually the musician's girlfriend picking him up. And that reminds me of something. Let's think about this. Ah yes, once upon a time, we too had a bus. Ah, oh, what a beautiful, beautiful beach. Oh, what nice music. Which I'm ruining by talking. I just want to take screenshots of all these still lifes. Maybe I will do exactly that. Ah! I have reminisced until nighttime. It is now time to check into the hotel and turn out the lights. And bring on our guest for this week's episode. All the links can be found in the show notes at IndieCider.net slash Old Man's Journey, and you can find the game itself at OldMansJourney.com. Without any further ado, here's our interview. Today I'm joined by Clement Scott, the creative director at Broken Rules, and of course creative director for Old Man's Journey. Hello, Clemens. Hey, how's it going? It's going great. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting outside. It's sunny in Vienna. It's, I'm, I'm doing good. Oh, wonderful. I went to Vienna on spring break way back in 1999, got to see some operas, had a wonderful time. Wow. Yeah. 1999. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a long time ago. <laughs> you know, I've probably had people on this podcast who weren't alive yet back then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm surprised. 
So I've been playing Old Man's Journey. I know it's a short game, but I haven't quite finished it yet. I'm really enjoying it, I, and it seems like it's been pretty well received as well. Yes, uh, it, it has, at least for, for, for what we are used to in terms of releasing games. Yeah, it just, just was yesterday, no, two days ago, it actually uh, received the Apple Design Award, which we are super, super proud of, obviously. And um, um, so far in general, like that, uh, uh, the coverage has been really good and, and the feedback has been really good and uh, people seem to really enjoy it, which, which is great. Well, that's wonderful. I know your colleague in this endeavor, Felix, he, was he at WWDC recently? Is that where he received that award? Yes, exactly. He was there. He, he was there long enough to, to be able to receive the award. So yeah, unfortunately, it was I, I would have liked to be there as well, but it just didn't didn't work out in the end. He he got to take it, he got to receive it. Well, I'm sure it won't be your last award. Maybe next time you can be the one receiving it. Who knows? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that would be wonderful. So speaking of conventions like WWDC, you were recently at GDC. You gave a talk about the kinds of games that Broken Rules is good at, the box of your skills and your talents. One of the things you said Broken Rules is good at is drawing from personal experiences to tell a story. Old Man's Journey, of course, is about an old man's journey. You don't seem from your GDC video to be an old man. <laughs> that, that is true. I'm not. Um... Not really. Sometimes I feel like it, but I'm not really. <laughs> no, it is. It is also um, always a difference between sort of where you draw your inspiration from and what you turn it into, like how you process it in a way. And it wasn't necessarily the idea that we feel like feel like old man, so we want to do a game about that. Sort of um, uh, the, the the topics that that the game talks about in a way that where well, that we drew from our sort of like personal experiences that we then put into the game and, 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 and try to find a sort of like a framework or a setup that would allow us to talk about these, these things in a way. And in our case that was sort of like an old man looking back on his life and his life's choices and um, how that sort of like turned out. I took a look at the graph that you put in your GDC presentation about the various emotions, as you were talking about, that the journey encompasses, how it starts off with happiness, joyful, expectant, and bliss, and then descends into sadness, shock, disappointment, and anger. And as I'm playing the game, those emotions are really coming across. And you talk about the choices that people make and sometimes the regrets that they have. And this, this game actually made me a little afraid to grow old because... I'm worried about the mistakes I'm going to make that I won't be able to recover from. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't feel like it should... I don't want the game to, to have some sort of like moral uh, high ground that tells you how to make your choices or, or it tells you like um, that, you know, don't make the wrong choices or you will regret it. It's, it's, it's basically, I think, all these things that happen in this, in this very short game are which talks like in, in roughly like 70 minutes of playtime or something or maybe 80 minutes about like a whole life and the things sort of that that could or can happen but in reality all these sort of like decisions don't don't happen in a day it's all sort of like a part of the process that is like my experience that is sort of like the one thing that um it's not as immediate as those things are in the game and also, I think I, I would like the game to talk more about hope because there's always sort of like a chance for like making up and reconciliation, which is also like a very big part of the game that it's never too late to kind of like reflect on your life and, and, and make new choices that will, that, you know, where there's sort of a, uh, how would I say it, sort of like there's, there's, there's hope for, for something positive, there's potential for it to turn to something positive that is always there so um yeah i don't i don't, I don't want people to be afraid <laughs> of, of their future choices i mean it's a very personal thing too it's sort of like um uh, i don't know everybody makes mistakes i guess so it's just part of life <laughs> And just as you can make new choices in this game, you can always reshape the hills to make new connections. Is that 
a metaphor you're trying to make between the gameplay and the narrative? Uh, I don't know. It, 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 it is it, it kind of, yeah, it would be nice, but it not, not really that much, I think, in a way that, you, you know, there's not really, there's not really much choice you have as a player in the game, really. So it's, it's very linear, and it's very, there's no alternate endings, there are no choices that you actually can make in the game that would sort of, like, make a difference on the outcome. Usually, like, in terms of puzzles, there's also mostly, like, one way to solve it or maybe some sort of, like, minimal variation of how to solve certain puzzles. Um, that's just because it's so light on the on the, uh, on, on the puzzle side, on the gameplay mechanics side. But sort of the, the metaphor that I, I always like the most is that the game is almost like a, a short novel. Um, in, in a way that it's sort of very story focused and it is, is segmented into these 15 levels that are sort of like almost like 15 chapters because each tells like a certain key moment and if you take that analogy further then like every hill would be sort of like a single page of that book so um, uh, I, I always kind of like that picture in a way but um, there's no real way to, to, to change the outcome or change the choices that the old man made. You're basically just there as a player to to guide him to his goal, to experience the story and then to and then to sort of like, I don't know, maybe reflect yourself on on on, on the story or on the decisions or on these on these topics in a way. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I hope that somehow answers that question. <laughs> I think perhaps one of the reasons I'm so melancholy at this point in the game is because that's where I am in the game. I just passed through the, the storm level, and okay. that's yeah. not a very happy reflection in the old man's life. Right, right, yeah. It's, it's, it's a little bit difficult to talk about the game or the, the ideas of the game without spoiling too much, I guess, if you haven't finished it yet. <laughs> I don't want spoil the story for you although many people say it's sort of um, very predictable on what is going to happen but I, I don't know other people have been taken completely by surprise uh, so, so it's, it's, it's really hard to make a general um, assumption about that I guess sure but uh, yeah it definitely has that it has that emotional curve that we had in the from the beginning on, it was one of our, our earliest um, uh, uh, methods of sort of uh, aligning the game, to, to, you know, or, or one of the first tools that we had, where we said, okay, this is, this is sort of like the emotional curve that we want to progress throughout the game, and that the players also experience throughout the game, and that maybe players even feel throughout the game, if we, and, and we wanted to align everything to that emotional curve. But yeah, that is also not like the new sort of, we didn't invent that tool that is actually taken pretty much from, from the design approach that um, that game company used for, I think, Flower as well as um, Journey. And uh, we always kind of like that approach a lot um, uh, because it's also, it's just a very helpful tool and it worked really well for us. I think, I think that is one of the parts that worked really well in designing the game. Yeah, I think if you're looking for inspiration for a wordless narrative with beautiful visuals, you can't do much better than Journey. That absolutely, yes. <laughs> that, absolutely. It's even more so that uh, they managed to have a direct conversation without words uh, between two players playing human beings, which in a way is even more in terms of design something uh, that I really appreciate or I think that is has even so in in a way when you're talking about sort of like what I value as, as a as a designer or what I value in games uh, what the games kind of games that I want to make that is even like above what we did <laughs> in a way because for us it's just you know as a player just kind of like push the, the story forward right but in, in journey it's like really the interaction with other players that makes it so special so among other things obviously would you say as a designer you see text as sort of a, a hindrance does it get in the way of storytelling in a visual sense well that, that really depends on the type of game that you're making but um 
and also like the types, you know, what sort of like people expect from a game. If you're going to make an RPG or, or, or like some, something like classic sets or, or uh, 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 interactive fiction, people are going to expect text, right? Because there are certain people like to do just that. They like to read and play or play alongside reading stuff. For me personally, or for this, this journey, it was also one of the constraints that we put up early on because we wanted to make a mobile game that is has a very low entry barrier that is that can be played and enjoyed by by you know all kinds of people that are not necessarily gamers or might have been playing computer games when you know they were younger or something like that and now don't have the time as much and to be able to play games so they know sort of the vocabulary but um, don't have the time or the, 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 the patience to sort of like sit down and, and, and read stuff so I think for this for this story it was it was just mandatory to do it without text and generally like one of the things when I talk to people develop casual games which old man's journey could be described as uh, they're all like okay you know what people just don't read the text they don't want to read the text and they want to play a game and if they put like text in tutorials people are likely to just kind of like skip it or skim over the text at, at best <laughs> in a way so this is definitely something that we wanted to to avoid not because i think that, that text per se is like a bad thing or is a not a valid way to enhance or even design games. Um, there are very, very good text-based games, but it, it was just not what Open's Journey sort of was set out to be. One thing I did set out to do is to tell a story, which is one of the things that Open Rules is good at, as well as have a distinctive art style. And those two things define, in my opinion, most of the games, or if not all, that you have made, such as And Yet It Moves, Radicon, Chasing Aurora. I'm curious, if those are the things that are common to your games, what is unique about Old Man's Journey that you haven't done before? We haven't done before. Well, first of all, it's, a, it's really designed for mobile. We have never really been doing um, a, a mobile game. It is on PC as well, but the PC version, as many people also criticized, especially has been like technically has been uh, uh, sort of under engineered to the point where we didn't, when we released it on PC, we didn't even have a uh, like a settings menu, which was like heavily criticized. And we uh, already put that into the game and are going to maybe it's already out. I'm not sure, but we're going to release it with with uh, an update soon. Um, but that's sort of like shows that you know the PC part always in a way was a bit of a side product because we were working with Unity and we just had the possibility and it works with PC but if you look at like the type of people that play PC games like for most of them the game was sort of like way too easy and way too little challenge in terms of puzzle and gameplay still many people were able to enjoy it and I'm happy about that but first and foremost it was always a, a a mobile game and that's what it was designed for it was designed for touch and it was designed for the casual and mobile audience that are also a lot you know sort of like outside of the game sphere in a way so that is definitely like a difference a big difference to to our previous titles because it's like all all three of them get it moves chasing aurora and and uh secrets of ready to come were uh designed for controllers really I mean, and the Moose was initially designed for keyboard, and later on, when it was ported to the Wii, it, it had a controller. So as soon as you have a, a, a controller as an interface, you already demand a certain amount of, of uh, dexterity, you know, finger dexterity, basically, and, and knowledge of, you know, you know, press the A button to chomp, press the A button to flap your wings, like these types of things that are very common and totally sort of like obvious to to a player, to a regular player any types of digital games but if you you know give the controller to to somebody else who has never never plays any games they're gonna have a really hard time getting into it so this type of of uh, sort of accessibility and and, and also you know the, the type of difficulty curve that you have in the game itself uh, is already something that differentiates old man's journey on on a technical level in terms of, of uh, uh, you know, maybe more about the sort of like the content of the game. I think this is 
probably our most focused game. It's not necessarily like a, a, a proper kind of like a uniqueness in a way, but uh, many of the things that we did in Old Man's Journey were sort of, you know, are, are based on the constraints that we set us at the very beginning. And there are a lot of design goals or constraints that we set before we even started working on the game, well, during its sort of like incubation phase uh, that held up throughout the whole development process and are still like I, I feel like in, in many ways this this game is so spot on with the vision that we had when we started out uh, developing it, thinking about the game uh, we have never been able to pull that off before like especially with with our previous two games chasing all and secrets of great to Dawn. The, like one of the biggest problems that I see that uh, they are not focused enough and and one of the reasons for that is because we are essentially five team members working on it and each like every one of us were designing the game and um, that sort of like really um, hurt the vision in my opinion because the game tries to be a lot of different things instead of focusing in on being good at what of being very good at one specific thing so um, um, maybe that is a difference uh, between between Old Man's Journey and our previous games. So after all that work and all that collaboration, it was very important that this game be successful. And in your GDC talk, you mentioned that one of the benefits of having a distinctive art style for this game was that it would make editors want to decorate their storefronts, which would mean more features for you. Exactly. Does that mean that you actually took marketing into consideration during the design phase? Does marketing influence the design of the game? Yes and no. So um, maybe that is also one of the differences to our previous games, that this sort of was the first game where we, you know, the, the goal was sort of, sort of to make something that is totally marketable and sellable and something that you can make money off without compromising a certain artistic vision, I guess. Because our previous games were uh, driven a lot by ideals instead of like business thinking. Uh, but after like, we founded the company in 2009, so after, after eight years of, of making uh, games that are mostly based or probably like heavier weighted towards um, uh, our ideals instead of like smart or at least some kind of, you know proper business thinking <laughs> uh, we decided we wanted to do something that we actually were able to to you know sustain our families with or uh, or not families but at least our studio you know hey <laughs> because like after our previous projects we and as I said we, we were pretty much broke and we saw that uh, we just didn't make enough smart business decisions and also didn't lay out our game properly for, for uh, marketing, you know. And that's definitely something that we did with this game. And, um, it's, you know, I, I personally still see it sort of as, a, as an experiment that is, can I make the games that I want to make? Can I make a living of making games? Can I, can I just make it? games that I want to be and make money with them <laughs> and, and make you know I'm not planning on, on getting rich because if you want to do that you should do something else but you know can I make enough money to st sustain a company and to sustain a family so far we have only really been able to do that because all of our partners are supporting us and um, um, we have you know since, since 2009 we made four games and eight children so we all have family wow. and of course at some point you need to sort of start to uh, you know uh, kind of kind of justify living your dream in a way that is having your own studio and making the games that you want to make um, if, if you're not like making any money off them so yes as a short answer that definitely was one of the of the requirements of what we wanted to do and we wanted to see if the if the you know sort of like the balance between art and and uh, you know, money essentially 
can can be done in a way that that still feels good for us. And I think, I mean, so far we were able to hopefully pull it off. I guess <laughs> it has been doing doing decently well. I'm good. So you have had this experiment. It's been fairly successful. It's also been a time of dramatic change for broken rules. What is next, either for you or for the company? We don't really know. That, that is sort of the thing. Um, the, I, I feel like the, uh, if, you, if you want to call it, the industry is, is, is changing so fast and our situation is in a way so special because I don't know many, many people or studios who have been doing this for this amount of time without while making this amount of money, I guess. Um, so uh, we usually plan only for the next project. Right now, we, so our thing was we wanted to do Old Man's Journey as, as kind of like this, this, this last chance for the studio. It was sort of like this thing, okay, if we can make this work, then we're gonna keep doing it and keep trying to make games. And if it doesn't work, then we're just gonna basically, you know, call, call quits and 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 you know, do something else, find a job that, that pays money, essentially. We haven't really planned for, for, the, for the case of what happens when we do not fail. <laughs> uh, that, sounds, that sounds rather dramatic. Um, no, I think what, what, what will happen now is that, first of all, we're going we're gonna to take a bit of vacation and try to recover from the past 18 months of, of, of working really hard on this. And then uh, we'll return and basically see what happens a little bit. Um, maybe collaborate with, with a few people. Maybe maybe port the game to different platforms. Um, uh, you know, maybe you know, start something something new. But right now we're not really thinking about. And we don't. Or thinking about yes, but we don't have any any specific plans of, of what is going to happen next. Well, I think the success of Old Man's Journey is a good problem to have, and I hope you can figure out something to do next. In the meantime, can you remind our listeners where to find the game online? You can, can find it on various app stores. You can go to our website, www.oldmansjourney.com. You can find it on the, on the uh, iTunes store, obviously, uh, and as well as on Google Play. Uh, it is out on Steam too, um, and yeah, that's that's what it is. It's on a few other. Th- it's also on itch.io, which I should actually um, um, mention here because I really like itch.io, and so you can go buy it there. And it's also on the humble store as well. So lots of opportunities to get the game. Excellent. And if people want to follow you, are you on Twitter? Uh, so my Twitter handle is, is uh, Rostiger, as, 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 so R-O-S-T-I-G-E-R. Um, but if you just want to follow on the stuff that the studio is, is doing, uh, you can follow on Twitter at Broken Rules. Very good. There will be links to all those in the show notes found at IndieCider.net. Clemens, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me.